awesome. My very own three-dimensional clock. Hmm. I know what you're thinking. Why am I using an expensive computer and a powerful game programming framework like XNA to make a clock? Well, in previous tutorials, we created the world's coolest mood light and we moved a dog picture around the screen. So why not a big 3D clock now? In this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to load, position, size, and draw text on the screen. You're gonna combine these skills along with the use of the date time structure and your previous knowledge of for loops to create a fake 3D clock. Cool, eh? Before we start drawing text on the screen, it would be helpful to understand that whenever text shows up on the screen, it is written using a specific style called a font. A font represents the design of the characters in a style of text, such as Times New Roman, Arial, or my favorite, Segoy, which is the font you currently see on the screen. These styles are stored as font files in a folder on your computer. Let's take a look at the fonts. Here are the font files stored on my computer. They are accessible through the control panel. Let's take a look at Segoy UI. Here you see the different styles of Segoy. Bold, bold italic, and italic. Let's take a look at regular. In this file, you can see all the letters of the alphabet represented in the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. You can also see numbers and symbols as well. Let's create a new project and call it Big Clock. Big Clock. Right click the content folder big clock content and we're going to add a new item. That item is going to be a sprite font. This is the sprite font file we're going to use to write our text. Here the default name is sprite font one dot sprite font. Let's keep this name but later on in future programs you can call it something more meaningful like title screen font or even menu font. Click Add. Pause the video and add the sprite font. When a new font resource is created, it has a default font. In this case, Segoy UI Mono. In XNA 3.1, the default font was Kutene. You can change this font, but the name you type must match up with the name of one of the files in the font folder shown earlier in this video. The font information is written in a format called XML. That's what all these tags are about. Font name, size, and spacing. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It basically is a way of organizing the information of a font like its name, size, and style. If you're familiar with HTML, XML looks very familiar. Go to the Game 1 class file. Now that we have the font resource, we need to load the font into our game. First, let's create a variable that we can use to refer to the font. It will be of type sprite font. Let's type it at the top of the game. And let's call it font. Sprite font is the class used to refer to a font resource. Now let's go to the load content method and actually load the font. Here I'm going to delete this comment and type up a line that should actually look very familiar to you. Font equals content 
dot load. And in this case, I'm going to load a sprite font. And the name of my sprite font is sprite font one. Note that I don't type up dot sprite font as well. I do not need to type up the extension. Notice how this code is similar to the code used to load a texture 2D. You'll see this code again in a future tutorial when we learn how to load sounds. Pause the video, declare the sprite font variable, and load the sprite font. Now let's draw some text using the font. In the previous video, we used a rectangle object to position an image on the screen. For text, we will use a vector to specify the placement of the text on the screen. Let's go to the draw method and create a vector. We will use the vector2 class. Vector, oops, vector2 text vector is equal to new vector2 and let's put it at 20 comma 30. A vector is basically a term that means direction and distance. A 2D vector is given as two coordinates, x and y. To draw the text, we will use a sprite batch object. Let's go ahead and tell the sprite batch object that we are going to be draw some, drawing something with it very soon. So we should begin. Now we're going to use the draw string method of the sprite batch object. And we're going to supply it with four arguments. The font, the string representing the text we want to write, in this case, hello world, the vector location, in this case, text vector, and lastly, the color of the text. Let's go for red. And now we tell our sprite batch that we are done. Pause the video and add this code. Cool. You might be wondering why hello world? Well, it's kind of programming tradition. Anyway, the font's too small, so we need to change it. Let's close this. To change the font size, we need to go into the font file. Open up the sprite font 1 font file. Here you see that the size is set to 14. Go ahead and change it to 28. And while we're here, let's change the style as well from regular to bold. Save your changes. Press F5. And that's a proper hello world. Pause the video and edit the sprite font XML file. Alright, let's show the time on the screen and to do that we're going to use the date time structure. Go to the draw method again and type date time now date time is equal to date time dot now. Now is a property of the date time structure that represents the current date and time as specified by your computer's internal clock. This property might be useful in future games when you need to record the time a game began. Once we have the date time variable, we can ask it to give us a string that represents the time in text form. Go ahead and type string now string is equal to now date time dot to long time string. The two line two long time string method returns the textual form of the now date time variable. 
Next, we'll draw the time on the screen. Instead of a text vector now, let's change this to a now vector. And it's going to be a vector 2. And let's put it at 50, comma, 200. We have our sprite batch dot begin already. We have our font. But instead of hello world, we want the now string. And instead of text vector, we want the now vector. Pause the video and add this code. Let's see this in action. Press F5. And there we go. The current time. Cool. The next thing we want to do is spice up our clock display a bit with a cool effect. One way to make the display more interesting is to draw different colored versions of the text at slightly different positions on the screen. Let's edit the draw code. After we draw a red version of the time, let's move the now vector a little bit by incrementing the x value by 4 and do the same thing with the y value. After we've done that, let's draw the time again, but this time in yellow. So I'll copy and paste it and just change the red to yellow. And there we go. What we've done is we've drawn the text in red, incremented the now vector x and y values a bit, and then drawn a second layer, a second layer in yellow. Pause the video and add this code. Let's see what it looks like. Pretty cool. Here you can see that the red version of the time string is overwritten by the yellow version, making the letters appear to pop out on the screen for a nice yet fake 3D effect. To get a nicer effect, we need to add more layers between the yellow and the red. We'll do this by typing up the same code over and over again to create more red layers. Here we incremented by four. Let's increment by one and draw the red again and then increment by one again and let's repeat this a couple more times. Well, this looks nice and repetitive. Let's see what it looks like on the screen. All right, a little bit better. But you know, I'm thinking I know of a programming concept that would probably decrease the amount of code I just typed up. And that's called a for loop. Let's use a for loop to repeat code for us. Go ahead and delete that. And we're going to wrap these three lines in a for loop. Go ahead and type for in layer is equal to zero layer less than four, layer plus plus. Now we're gonna create a block, put these statements in the block, and then close the block. So basically, what we've done is that we've started counting with layer zero, and we repeat the loop body code, these three statements here, while the layer variable is less than four. We increment the layer by one every time we execute the loop body. 
Pause the video and add this code. Let's see what it looks like. The same thing, but with less code. Awesome. So, in this tutorial, you should have learned how to load, position, size, and draw text on the screen. You should have also learned how to use the date time structure and for loops to create a fake 3D clock. You can use these skills to not only display time for a game, but also display player lives, instructions, and even dialogue. Good luck, game programmer.